Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm the CMO for Aperion. We're a B-stage investment, a B-round company at this point. I'll tell you a little bit about the path that we had gone through, um, through funding and growing the organization. We're in a, uh, the mobile management market. Um, so the product, in a nutshell, is basically a platform that helps enterprises securely distribute mobile apps to their workers. Uh, you could think about this like a private branded uh, iTunes app store for workers inside an organization. So it helps IT people really easily, securely distribute apps to their workers, the kind of apps and content that they don't want in Apple iTunes. That's what we do right now. It's not how the company started. We've gone through a number of pivots and tax following the opportunity um, in the marketplace and following the, the requirements from our customer base. Um, and we're fortunate to have a number of really great investment uh, partners that have helped us along that journey. Um, this is the way I tell the story right now. We started you know, looking at uh, mobile enterprise app dev, and then we went into the mobile enterprise app store and, and following the path. Um, looks great, right? Not exactly how it happened. And we haven't been in business that long. The company was founded in 2009. Um, we were one of the organizations that actually started with customer capital. In our case, Aperion was um, was founded doing services business. So we were actually hired by enterprises to build mobile apps. We were their mobile app developer. The company's founder spun out of Apple. He was one of the early guys in the organization to actually be hired by big companies to build their mobile apps. He saw that as a lucrative business. It sort of wasn't aligned with Apple's strategy at the time. So we, he spun out and actually you know, grew a small services organization to start building mobile apps. Well, when they were building mobile apps, they realized there wasn't a really good way for distributing those mobile apps to the enterprise. And there wasn't a good commercial platform to do that at the time. So based on our firsthand experience with customers, we realized, hey, this is a problem. We don't have a solution for doing that. Maybe we should, we should think about productizing some mechanism to secure and distribute mobile apps in the enterprise, because a lot of companies aren't going to want to put their stuff up in iTunes. That was the birth of the company. Um, it was really, it, it may seem obvious right now, but it was really cloudy back then. iOS and Android were very early in the enterprise. Uh, this was the case when consumers, like all of us in our daily lives, were pulling our corporations and our employers into the space because we wanted to bring cool phones to work and we wanted to use apps on those phones. And IT organizations didn't really have a solution for that. And a lot of the company's early uh, solutions that we built were really just in response to individual customers, but we were paid to develop those things. So that helped fund the company. It got us attached to a number of customer problems, and we started attacking those. But in that process, in realizing that there wasn't a really good viable platform for us distributing the apps, we wanted to prototype and develop what we thought would be a platform for longer term scale. And that's when we went out and we found some of our early investors. For us, uh, around Boston, that was the Common Angels and Launch Capital. These are organizations that are sort of used to dealing with small teams and sort of, you know, early stage ideas. They helped open a bunch of doors. They helped fund the company such that we could hire some engineers to build the platform versus mobile app developers who were building the mobile apps. And those are two different kinds of technology skills and people who want to do two different kinds of technology development. So the early funding helped us start building the prototype to what would become the platform that we have right now. Uh, we were lucky enough to land some really good and powerful customer accounts. Some customers are still with us right now. Um, they were the early investors in the company, like Katie said, and that was, I think, one of the most valuable things the founder and the founding team did to get the company off and running. Um, Here's a, a quick video by uh, David Patrick, our CEO. We can give you a little context on the fundraising at that early part of the, the organization. Uh, hi, Michael. Uh, thank you. Um, and I apologize. I can't be there in person tonight, uh, traveling on the West Coast. But I did want to uh, take a minute to add a few thoughts about how we worked together in the early days around building uh, uh, an initial A round, Series A, and how we went through the process. I think. My, my number one advice is, you know, you, when you look at picking your first VC or lead investor, which in this case was uh, Northbridge, you, you really want to set your, your heights very high. And it's an, it's an important long-term partnership. And uh, my belief is you want to get the best VCs that you can get on board with the company because it's a very, very long-term relationship. Uh, we were very fortunate to get uh, Michael and Northbridge to be our lead. Um, they're based in Boston. They, you know, obviously are a strong partnership firm for us. But also, Michael not only helped me 
uh, hone this story as we went to put the Series A together, but then helped me set my sights very high for additional follow-on investors. So from there, we went out and went on a, a, a tour that took me you know, around the country. We ended up picking Bessemer Ventures uh, out of New York, which has uh, a huge passion for the mobile market and you know, was a great addition to the team. Uh, and then finally, uh, we set our sights very high to go out on the West Coast, and we were able to close and work with Kleiner Perkins, specifically in their iFund portfolio, which was uh, a fund that they set aside to focus specifically on iOS uh, software companies and, and software solutions partners. So, so we, uh, we, we ended up with a fantastic results, obviously, with Northbridge Bessemer and, and Kleiner. You know, we, we got many, many benefits, really, from, from having top-tier uh, investors. And, and I, my advice is shoot very high. Okay, so um, the seed round in our organization was uh, Common Angels and Launch Capital. Um, I depicted a smooth path. It wasn't really that smooth. We, you know, there were a bunch of pivots and sort of early tax in the organization as we learned more about the company, excuse me, the, um, the customer's requirements and sort of start building out the prototype for um, what would become our platform. Sort of V1 of that was this early stage enterprise app store. Around that time, that's when we started um, meeting up with Michael and some of the A-round investors to really take the capital and make the investment to move from what was a prototype to actually productize this mobile app store. And that kind of opened up the A round or the next round in the company's growth and expansion. So at this point, the mission for us was, okay, the prototype for the app store is working. How do we productize that? How do we commercialize it? How do we get it out in, at scale into the marketplace? Um, and we were fortunate enough to bring on uh, Northbridge, Bessemer, and Kleiner for slightly different reasons, but they've, they've remained really, really good business partners. I think the value that they've brought to the company is far beyond the capital and the checks. You know, these guys were, at this point in the company's life, open, you know, able to open up some doors, make introductions, be really good, solid, outside strategic counsel, because, you know, when you're in the hamster wheel every day, building a company and trying to secure and land customer accounts, sometimes you lose perspective. And because the mobile industry was getting white hot, there's a lot of noise out there. And they can kind of be sometimes a little bit of a steadying force to help you think through the implication of a move from one market to another or different you know, major product investments. Um, so we did the A round um, uh, sort of in 2011. We did a B round with the follow-on uh, investors, and we brought on an additional investor in 2012. So this was, this was pretty quick, but we were making a lot of progress as an organization. The industry was getting really, really um, competitive. There was a lot of, of growth, a lot of competitors coming in, and we wanted to fuel the expansion that the, the business was experiencing. It wasn't a smooth path, depend, you know, despite my, my, my graphic. At the time when we were moving from sort of this, this um, you know, productizing our mobile app store, we had a vision that more was going to be required to distribute apps and content securely in the enterprise. Our vision began expanding to really mobile application management. So what else is going to be required in the organization to wrap content and apps with policy, uh, governance, security? You know, IT organizations now were bringing a lot of our product into their area of responsibility. Before, it was being done by small groups of people throughout the organization, but it was becoming much more of an enterprise sale. And that, that evolution happened really, really quickly to us. Um, the early branding of the company was focused you know, more on apps and sort of more on the, the empowerment of the small groups of people that were in the organization running mobility projects. But what we realized, and the investors were a good help, was that this was very quickly becoming controlled by central IT. These were no longer rogue projects that we could attack. This was, how do we take this SaaS platform and get into uh, centralized IT and deal with CIO organizations? So given I was sitting in the boardroom, I'd like to tell you an example of what looks like a simple uh, <clears throat> line there, which was really, frankly, a pretty big shift in the company that Mark's alluding to, which is, we got a customer. I can say who it is, I think. Yeah, it's public. Cisco. You stand up, I don't know why I'm sitting down here. Um, and, you know, Mark and I are sitting there discussing this, and you get this customer, Cisco, and you go, wow, well, that's an amazing brand name. Tens of thousands of devices get put up. They create this, their own app store. They call it the App Fridge. It looks like Nirvana. So we think, wow, that, let's look at how that happened. Well, it happened because 
there was a guy in, in the line of business who actually needed to empower the sales force who said, we've got to make this happen. So we sit there and we think, well, this is great. We're seeing these people want to buy this stuff directly from us from line of business. Let's set up the brand and everything else for that. Tell us what happened. Yeah, so it did, uh, it followed the squiggly line, not the smooth line, right? So we were, and, and I think when you're, when you're in an operating role in an early stage company, you, you really, you follow customer developments and you celebrate landing new deals, you celebrate expansion, but I think the, the, the difficult balancing act is how do you step back and look for broader signals? Is this customer win an outlier or can I repeat it? And if I can repeat it, how costly is it going to be to repeat? You know, we, we look for scale in the business and we look for early indicators of scale and scalability. And, you know, there were a couple of early customers who shed light on an opportunity with this app store and this mobile app management concept. But um, we celebrated landing them. What we, what we missed early was that IT was taking control of these projects much more quickly than we thought. And the early branding of the company, as you could probably gather from the, you know, from the fist and sort of the font type, and if you looked at the website at the time, was very much about empowering individual line of business people and individual developers. It was a revolution style message. And we had celebrated launching that. But meanwhile, what had happened in our customer base is IT very quickly said, nope, these are centralized IT projects. You've got to plug into centralized systems. We've got security. You're going to go through our, our procurement process. Um, the role of partners and SIs was much more significant than it had been earlier in the company's life. So while we had a SaaS platform that was easy to stand up, it wasn't being consumed and purchased that way. It was becoming much more of a corporate sale, despite our, our wishes and desires to keep it from happening. That was really how the market was buying our product. And we realized that we had, you know, some people in the organization were really tuned up for more of a B2C style sale, which is how the company was founded. Um, the branding, the go-to-market materials, our partners, um, the website, all of this stuff was pointing to the wrong prospect profile, the wrong persona. So when you think about product market fit, which is really sort of the lifeblood of, of pivoting and tacking through the growth of an early stage company, we had a great product. The market shifted practically overnight, right? And meanwhile, we have to make, you know, we got to keep the, the lights on. We want to keep funding sales and marketing growth. And this led to decisions for the next phase of the company's life. And this is around when we were closing our B round. Um, and we were fortunate enough to bring um, the existing uh, investment partners with us. They were committed to the opportunity space. And in the B round, we also introduced a strategic investor, which in this case was Intel Capital. So again, much more than just the check that was written, these guys represented the, the prospective buyer that we were trying to reach, right? And they too opened doors. And the company, we ended up rebranding the company to be much more IT and partner friendly. It wasn't about a revolution, it was about empowering IT to do really cool and innovative things in a safe and predictable way, um, which resonated with what IT was trying to do. And our mission right now is how do we scale the business fast, how do we make it more repeatable, how do we lower the risk, how do we increase the value in, um, in our market. And, but meanwhile, we've basically overhauled a lot of the company. The branding is, is different. We've overhauled the messaging platform. We've got a, a sales and marketing organization that is about reaching enterprise customers. Um, we've positioned the company in a total different way. We're probably half uh, indirect sold right now versus uh, the early days, which is sort of direct in a, in a direct to user model. Now it's you know big partners like IBM, McAfee, um, BT, AT&T reselling our products. We've got a lot of reach into the market, but it's totally changed the way that we have to support these organizations. So pretty dramatic changes that we had gone through since 2009. Um, and we're really fortunate to have good investment partners to help us with that. Uh, here's a last piece of David's video. You know, if you sat down with me and said, these are the three investors that would be on board when we started the process, that, that would have been a difficult challenge to commit to that. But we worked very, very hard to bring the absolutely best top tier investors that we could on board. And, and we think we did very well. From there, having you know, those three investors, the introductions that we were able to have, the introductions they brought, the CIO advisory boards I've been invited to, I've probably spoken to 75 CIOs that were introductions from Kleiner, Bessemer, and Northbridge. Uh, we also were able to bring Intel Capital in as a, through the connections from our investors. So 
by, by getting those top tier branded investors, we were able to kind of grow and build on that. And, and it helps when we walk into a customer, when we say we're in Northbridge and Bessemer and Kleiner portfolio company, when we talk to a customer or a CIO about our solution, they know that we've been vetted by the best firm. So, so I encourage all of you to shoot high. And, uh, you know, and in the end, when you're building a business, this is a very long term relationship. You, you, this is five years, seven years, nine years, and you want firms that can stick with you, that can work with you um, and, 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 you know, can help you guide through these various stages of funding, A round, B round, C round. This is, this is a long term process. And I, I think the final comment is, it's great to have really, really smart people on the board. And, you know, when you get a great firm and you get a great partnership with these, you know, senior firms and, and you have smart people, it, it, it really helps and, and helps you when you're kind of addressing, addressing the various stages of growth for an early stage company. So good luck, everybody out there. I, I hope you get an opportunity to work with some of the firms that we've worked with. And, uh, um, you know, I think they just can't stress enough how important it is to get really, really good partners on board uh, when, you, when you start your uh, venture out. Thanks. The truth is appearance being a great company to work with. There are three lessons I want you to take from this story. Number one is funding is about timing. So here's an example of what would have been really tricky. You heard us describe what was a big pivot for us, which was shifting from selling to line of business to figuring out how to sell to the CIO. Imagine if we'd also been trying to raise money at the same time and didn't have investors who, for example, knew how to play through that bridge. That would be really tricky. So you always want to have capital at the point that you have most uncertainty. I'll just say that again. You always want to have actually the most capital at the point that you have the most uncertainty. Now that's tricky because you can't always predict that. So one of the things you want to think about is when you're going to go through some kind of change, make sure you've got enough capital to get well beyond it. And that's one of the things I try to help entrepreneurs think about. Well, so what are the next things you're going to do? Develop new products, develop new channels, etc. How will you propel all the way through that? The second thing I want you to take away is as follows, which is we would never have predicted that going through that change would have also caused us to go through different channels. But of course it did. And it was that point where we realized that one of the key players, in fact, is McAfee. Um, who's part of now Intel. And that's why we got Intel involved. It wasn't so obvious, but I didn't want to give the story away. And McAfee's actually a security company, and it turns out security is one of the major concerns that started to come out from enterprises. And they approached us. So again, it was money that was coming after us. And they told us, hey, if we could help you tell the story, then there'd be some value add to this. So the second point, sorry, the third point is when you get a, um, an investor who can bring more than money, and it really is on the same path you're on, that's the really good investor. It's the investor who's actually helping propel your business. The check they're writing is incidental. So in this case, this was a partner who was actually not only going to help us but, um, with our product, but also our go-to-market. And in fact, McAfee's become a major uh, sales force for us that literally trained. How many people did we train this year, just to get a sense of it? Hundreds, hundreds of people. So forget the money. Imagine training hundreds of you know, sales reps to go out and pitch this. That's why appearance on a tear. And uh, they've done this, by the way, multiple times since with many, many partnerships, people like British Telecom and, uh, and many others. So I won't go into the whole story. But, but thank you, Appearance, for sharing that with us. Mm -hmm.